Hi, this is Maginone, and I'm going to cover the three uh, Fear Itself tie-ins I got. We got Alpha Flight number one, Avengers 14, Iron Man 505, and Avengers Academy number 15. Now, with the um, if you remember in Fear Itself number three, basically what was going on is it was very fast-paced. You know, they just took you from scene to scene just to give you a taste of what everybody was doing. And then they also had uh, another plot line, which was the overall story, part of the central part of the story, with like Thor and um, Steve Rogers and things like that. Well, in these tie-ins, these tie-ins break off into all the different side plots. And I have to admit, these tie-ins actually are really, really strong for the most part. Uh, it's like, um, this is kind of like what I thought... Um, you know, Siege, or Secret Invasion, or um, Civil War should have been like, because um, I think in those miniseries, all those side stories, a lot of them were just, a lot of them were weak, they didn't, they didn't have intensity to them, like a sense of urgency, a sense of death, things like that, and this is just chaos and craziness, and that's what really makes this really cool. Now, like, for an example, in Avengers Academy, um, this is dealing with, um, you have two groups, you have Hank Pym and, um, Quicksilver and, um, Ast Vance Astro, they're going, they're going off to, uh, deal with the supervillains who escape from the raft. Um, on the other hand, reluctantly, Tigra sends the Avengers Academy to Washington, D.C. because they have to deal with, um, Sin and her forces there. Now, I think that if you were to compare the last issue of Fear itself with this, it doesn't. The actual battle at times doesn't hold the the same intensity, or the the same look and feel to it, which you know is understandable because it's a different artist. But I think what they convey really well is the sense of terror and um, how basically how not prepared these heroes are for the situation. Um, you know, you can just see it in their faces where they're making life and death decisions. Their death is around them in every corner, and they're all the decisions. I mean, they're being greatly affected by it. Especially, um, what's his name, Mad Mantle, who uh, kills one of the uh, uh, one of the uh, Sin's guard or Sin's troops. And um, I think it was named Striker. He has uh, he he fears death. And he's like choking up, but you know, eventually through the book they're starting to get you know, like they're pulling together, and ultimately you can see where they're gonna be able to pull like the hero out of these characters. But I think it's really great that they highlight the fact that these are really inexperienced people. Um, eventually, uh, Hank Pym and his team has to go dealing with uh, Absorbing Man and Titan, Titana in uh, Dubai, and that's gonna be an awesome fight. Because they finally addressed with the Absorbing Man, with his abilities, he should be, you know, pretty much up there with, like, Dr. Doom and Magneto. But his mind was the one thing that held him back. But in this case, you know, he's been elevated. And um, his power level is basically where it should be. And so I'm really curious to see where that fight's going to go. Overall, this was a re I really, really enjoyed this book. Uh, with Iron Man... 505, we're dealing with, uh, this is part two to the battle between, well, Iron Man and the uh, Grey Gargoyle with his hammer, and this issue is, is totally jacked up, because the Grey Gargoyle basically turned almost all of Paris into statues, and guess what, this, this is a mountain of dead people right there. I don't know how they're going to fix that. I mean, my guess is Odin's going to wave his hand and everybody's going to be alive again. That's the only thing I can think of, but, um... The battle between these two are real, is really, really good. You have Tony who's like, like, you know, why do we talk when we're in battle? It's because, well, uh, we're terrified. And, you know, he makes reference to Spider-Man. And um, the Great Gargoyle really does a number on Tony. Just jacks him up right and left. And eventually there's, um, what's his name, Steel Detroit comes in. And um, you can imagine what's going to happen to, um, I'm sorry, Detroit Steel. You can imagine what's going to happen to him. Uh, very, very solid. Very solid issue. Uh, very good. Uh, 
um, Avengers uh, number 14. This, this was, now I don't, the only drawback I have to say to this was the artwork um, by JRJR. Uh, you know, it carried that same theme of, you know, going with you know, that last Avengers title where they went through all the different characters like they were doing the, the interview. But, unfortunately, when you go to the battle, everything is very boxy. Like, you know, like for an example, if, when you looked at the Avengers Academy one, you know, like basically what you had is, you know, like there's, you know, there's more movement. You have, you know, like we look at the legs, you look at the bodies, even the, the, the uh, picture angle is, is different. Um, it's a different, totally different perspective. But when you go here, it's, let's draw the line, and then boom, boom. It's, it's, it's like basically he drew a grid and he just filled it in. And I don't, I didn't like, I really did not, I think it just, for me, it distracted uh, quite a bit from the artwork. Uh, this, I thought, though, was an, an, a really cool picture of the thing with his hammer. And when you, if you read this, um, the characters, when they're doing their little, uh, little mini speeches, they're hinting that something really tragic is going to happen to the thing. Um, the rest of this issue is just a fantastic smash-down fight uh, between... Uh, the thing and the Red Hulk and uh, Avengers Tower gets destroyed. And what I thought was really a nice touch was uh, Jarvis makes reference to the fact of how in the past uh, the Masters of Evil attacked and uh, uh, Avengers Mansion destroyed it and uh, severely injured like uh, Hercules, put him into a coma, uh, did a number on Jarvis himself, and they almost won. And uh, I thought that was a nice touch. This th was, you know, uh, this was probably uh, one of my favorite uh, Bendis Avenger titles of the, you know, from when they they did that movie launch. And um, I'm just the impacts, the punches, the the hammers getting hit. You know, when the uh, the Hulk hits the the thing. I mean, not the thing, but the the thing hits the Red Hulk. It's it was really really well done. I really I really like that part. Now let's get on to Alpha Flights here itself. This is probably the weakest of them all. Um, what we have is, you know, we have the same sense of fear and and anger and all that other nonsense that's flowing around everywhere. And in in Canada, Akuma, he basically attacks. And the the thing is, you would think that he would be super powerful, like everybody else, but Alpha Flight is actually able to hold their ground, and they beat them. Um, and when, they, when they say beat them, they don't def totally defeat him. But uh, Vindicator is able to um, basically save the day and get Akuma out of the, uh, out of the picture. Um, and actually cause him to bleed, which he makes a reference to. Um, you can tell there's some sort of, there's the internal strife between the Hudsons, and there's also the strike between uh, North Star, his sister, and the rest of the team because while they're battling out, North Star doesn't fight. Well, eventually he has to join the um, the fight, and he actually manages to stop the Atlanteans from attacking. Um, the art I think is okay. It's I mean it's decent. It's nothing. It's yeah. I mean it's decent. I don't I don't mind it too much. Um, also, I guess the, what you can see is the main outside. To me, the main focus of this book isn't necessarily the um, the attack on Canada. What we have here is reintroducing the characters for the people who haven't been reading Alpha Flight or don't know who these people are. And it's also the springboard for something's going on with the Canadian government where they're enacting this, like, almost like a police state type mentality and they're they have um, uh, they're going to basically try to eliminate Alpha Flight or at least some of the members of Alpha Flight so I don't know that part is making me wonder why but um, we'll see uh, it's only a mini series so I mean I'll probably stay with it for at least a couple more issues to see if it's good or not um, but like I said this is probably the weakest one like for an example out of these 
these four titles. Uh, these are the three that you need to get right here for sure. This one, uh, it's in Canada, so it doesn't really matter that much, at least for right now. Um, anyways, that's my review for these four books. If you have any comments or questions, let me know. Rate the video up or down. Let me know what you think. And I'm curious to know what you guys, if you know, if you bought any of these, uh, what do you guys think of uh, the Return of Alpha Flight? And um, I'll have more reviews up later. So until next time.